If you've got an exam coming up, you're going to want to make sure that you go through every single piece of information that you think could possibly come up in your exam. You're going to want to make sure you go through everything. And how are you going to go about doing that? Well, you're going to grab all your textbooks, grab all your lecture notes, and grab all those loose bits of paper that you got given at the beginning of the semester that are stuffed in some drawer somewhere, and you're going to go through it all. And how are you going to do that? Well, they're books, they're pieces of paper, they're written text. Obviously, you're going to read them, and then you're going to read them again, and then you're going to read them some more, and then you're going to read them again and again and again. And then you're going to read them again for that little bit of extra reassurance to make sure that you're going to pass these exams. Does that sound about right? Don't do this. There's now more research, evidence and YouTube videos out there telling you that this is a bad idea. Despite this, rereading notes is still the number one study technique that college students use to study for exams. Hi, my name's Colin and I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. Now in this video, I'm going to go through why rereading notes is a really, really bad idea when it comes to studying. Let's start with actually defining what rereading is. Rereading is a study technique which involves reading through notes that you've either prepared yourself or reading from pre-prepared materials such as textbooks in an attempt to acquire knowledge and retain information. The idea is the first time you read something, you won't fully remember it, so you take to reading the passage of text again. And then essentially, you keep repeating this process in the hope that each time you read the information, you'll retain more of it. Hopefully this is sounding pretty straightforward so far. You keep reading the information over and over again to memorise it. It seems like a really simple study technique. So simple that one study I found that the vast majority of college students would choose rereading as their number one study technique each time. Why do students like to choose rereading as a study technique? Well, to put it quite simply, if you think about all the different ways you can go about studying for an upcoming exam, picking up a textbook and reading from it isn't exactly complicated. It doesn't involve much thought, you don't have to plan how you're going to go about doing it, or you don't have to think about what you're doing when you are doing it. There's no real cognitive effort, and here lies the problem. Back to my point where I said rereading involves no cognitive effort. Rereading is a study technique which is considered a passive method for trying to retain information. Passive studying involves trying to take in information through means which don't involve any analysis or problem solving or any engagement with what you're doing. Or to put it even more simply, any real thought. You're just going through the information, you're not really taking it in. And that's why students like it so much, it feels easy. Now for a bit of a leap here, but bear with me. Former US President Theodore Roosevelt was once famously quoted as saying, nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain or difficulty. Now I know he wasn't talking about rereading from a textbook when he said this, but you actually can apply it to learning. Hear me out. I've just said reading from a textbook is easy and doesn't involve any pain, it involves little effort. And out of all the study techniques out there, it really isn't that difficult. However, contrast that with other study techniques like recalling information when you're working through past papers questions and mixing up your study topics by using interleaved practice. These techniques involve a lot more effort on your part and if you want a bit more information about some of these study techniques click on the link up here because I'll go through it in some of my previous videos. But back to my point, these studying techniques are considered active learning. Think about when you sit down to do a past paper question. You have no notes in front of you, you literally just have a question. All you can do is try and think about what you know about the topic. It might be difficult, it may feel like you know absolutely nothing, but you'll still try and get all the information out of your head on to the paper in front of you. Essentially, the past paper is making you recall information, and although this might be difficult, it forces you to think about what you do know about the topic. Rereading doesn't involve any of that. You can literally sit and read information over and over again, but at no point are you actually challenging yourself. At no point are you actually engaging your brain or doing something with the information you're trying to learn. Not only is rereading a really ineffective way of studying, it also has the unique skill of being able to trick you. This is because students fail to understand the difference between recognition and recall. What's the difference between the two? Recognition is when you're able to remember something after it's been shown to you. Recall, on the other hand, is when you're able to remember something without any prompts. To illustrate this, I'll give you an example. If you take two groups of students, all at the same educational level, and you ask both groups who's the president of China. The first group aren't given any prompts, they just have to answer the question. The second group, on the other hand, they're given a list of potential presidents before they have to answer the question. Who do you think is more likely to get the answer right? A study showed that 36% of participants could get the correct answer without any prompts, whereas 60% of the participants in the group who got the list got the answer right. The first group had to recall the information, they didn't have any clues, whereas the second group just had to recognise the answer. Now how does this apply to rereading notes? When you sit down and repeatedly reread through a textbook and a chapter, you feel like you're retaining the information. You feel like you're developing an understanding of the material. Turns out though, you're not. Instead, you're just gaining a recognition for the words on the page, 
rather than actually being able to recall the information. And you're not actually understanding the material you're reading. Essentially, you've fallen for an illusion of learning. So then when the exam comes around, you're screwed. You don't know how to recall the information and at best you might pick up on some of the words that you recognise in the exam question itself. Exams aren't there to test your recognition, they're there to test your recall. And rereading is a study technique which specifically targets recognising, not recalling information when you need it most. Don't fall into the trap of using rereading as your main study method for upcoming exams. The illusion of learning that we just discussed also aligns with a psychological bias known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now the Dunning-Kruger effect is when a person who lacks knowledge or skills overestimates their capabilities. Now this is fairly common in an educational setting. You'll get students who say, I studied for ages, how did I fail this exam? Or I knew everything before the test, why did I fail? Now the reason this occurs is because students who are lacking knowledge or understanding of a topic essentially don't know what they don't know. Their lack of knowledge and understanding prevents them from recognising their own mistakes. So essentially this creates a subconscious bias where they overestimate their own capabilities. Now relating this back to rereading notes, well, we already know that rereading creates an illusion of learning. And if you already think you're retaining the information from reading through notes, it's easy to see how you could fall into the Dunning-Kruger effect. And I'll walk you through this process. Rereading notes makes you feel like you've learned a lot of information. This then leads to you think that you're doing really well and you start to feel confident. Because rereading notes doesn't have a mechanism for checking how much information you've retained, so you're not actually sure of what you don't know, this perpetuates the overconfidence. Then you go to sit the exam, struggle to answer the question, and become confused as to why you don't know anything despite spending hours and hours rereading notes. When you think about it, you can actually see how rereading notes can leave you in this situation. Now, this is a research paper that a lot of people seem to come back to when they're talking about the effectiveness of different studying techniques. And one of the benefits of this research paper is they've drawn on techniques which have been developed by both cognitive and educational psychologists. And the purpose of this research is to evaluate all the different study techniques and evaluate them based upon how effective they are. And conveniently, one of the study techniques that they've covered is rereading notes. So let's see what they say about it. Based on the available evidence, we rate rereading as having a low utility. Although rereading is relatively economical with respect to time demands, and training requirements when compared to some other learning techniques, rereading is also typically much less effective. The relative disadvantage of rereading to other techniques is the largest strike against rereading and is a factor that weighed most heavily in our decision to assign it a rating of low utility. Despite this, Dunlosky et al. did confirm that there is a massive research out there that confirms that rereading note continues to be one of the most frequently used study techniques for students. And more broadly, this raises the question, if rereading is such an ineffective way of studying, yet the majority of students continue to use it, is there not a responsibility on educational institutes to teach students effective ways to learn and basically discourage them from rereading their notes? If you have found this video useful, I've got a lot of previous videos which talk about different study techniques, which I'll link above. Also, if you've gotten this far, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.